Hola, queridos amigos, qué gusto platicar con ustedes en Copa de Por Medio. Y tengo un invitado, un personaje increíble, Eduardo Gas, amigo mío ya hace varios años. Y, y vamos a hacer esto en inglés, ya que Eduardo Gras es, Gras es brasileiro y radica en Estados Unidos hace muchos años. So Eduardo is a pioneer in the travel industry within Brazil and internationally recognized key and luxury travel expert entrepreneur. And Eduardo has grown TTW Group from a little one digit to of four employees to a holding company with five offices across the globe and a workforce of nearly 250 people. And from the day he created Ski Brazil, that was in 96, you were 23, my dear Eduardo. And long before the term when experience was, was so trendy like it is now, Eduardo was already delivering unique ski experiences to his client at resorts around the world. And this, this everything that he has done, all his approach to the industry, led to the company global expansion outside of, of snowy destination across the globe. And the multitude of companies that exist under TTW Group today are really a testament of Eduardo's passion for innovation. And I know you offer always this uh, bespoke travel, tailor-made mm -hmm. travel, and yeah. the latest also in travel technology. Everything is personalized detail touches that makes all the difference that what you've been making and your ongoing passion for learning the latest to to participate in many organizations actually in young president and organization i was part of it too in mexico and you served full term as chair skiing network and of course in harvard studying there and uh, doing all this uh, skiing center your life's work you've done a great job eduardo and it's such thank a you. pleasure to talk thank with you thank you uh, well, I mean, probably you talk either you probably talked to my mother before, um, because she she's the only one who holds me in such high regards. Uh, of course, I talk to your mother, <laughs> also also to your wife. Everybody, uh, loves you. <laughs> I don't think my wife will, will hold me in such high <laughs> regards. Um, I met you actually. We met in ILTM in Mayakuba many, in, uh, many years ago. How many? A, a, a few, a few. Yeah. I'd say uh, four or five years ago. Absolutely. And the and first that, time, the first time we met, and then uh, we've been seeing each other every ILTM. And I had the great opportunity also to to meet you again during a ski trip. I don't know if you remember, but we were at the same time. You were with your beautiful daughters uh, in Chile in skiing in Valle Nevado in in July, probably three or four years ago, right? Absolutely, it was beautiful. We enjoyed every moment. Your kids were skiing like professionals. <laughs> Everybody was having fun. And then we went to Atacama Desert, and it was really marvelous. It's, marvelous. it's beautiful, right? It's, we enjoyed it very much with Awasi and all those beautiful hotels. They are very we amazing. also manage them in Patagonia now. So, so tell me, tell me about you, about this passion, about what you're doing now. I know it's more than skiing. And, yeah. uh, so everything that, well, first of all, thank you. Thank you for having me here. It's such a pleasure to see you, even, even if it's not really face to face and we have to do everything via Zoom in what people call the new normal, but I don't. For me, this is a temporary abnormal. Absolutely. And, and I, miss, I miss being with you, being with people. You know, I'm, I'm Brazilian, as you said, so, you know how we are. I like hugging. I like kissing, and 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 I I miss this um, closer connection. So, cheers! Thank you. And cheers <laughs> to you. What a pleasure, really. No, it's 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 cheers. great to be here. I'm very. Happy. I'll, I'll, I'll take a sip and I'll tell you. Yeah, please do. I, yeah. I opened a bottle of acoustic. This is a very interesting wine, and it's from Monsan. So. I'll be I'll be trying it and I'll let you know what I think is. Let me know and, and you obviously can send me a bottle for me to to taste at home. I'll, I'll, but and, you, and you send me some ski leaf tickets, so we're good. Oh, well, well, deal. Let's do even. Let's do one better. Let's, let's go, go skiing and let's let's drink the wine. That's how that's how life should be. Absolutely. But, but, but I'll, I'll I'll tell you without I'll, I'll tell you a little bit. So everything in my life was nothing. 
um, up, up to a point, nothing was a business plan, right? Things started to happen organically. So I, I organically started in the ski business because I was passionate about skiing. Um, and it was a way for me to be able to ski more. It was actually an excuse for me to ski more, to kind of work in the industry. So I started working in the ski industry. And I, I never knew how to sell a package. From day one, all I knew how to do was, you know, to listen to what the other person, and wasn't even a client. In the beginning, it was a friend, what he wanted. And I was like giving him tips and pointers. And, you know, and more and more friends started calling me for those pointers. And eventually, you know, I started the company. Um, company grew. That's Ski Brazil. Um, eventually, I'm sure you, were, you were the first one to bring ski to the Brazilian. Uh, I mean, in, in, a, in a more, um, in a larger scale, yes. I mean, there were travel agencies that were selling ski trips like among their other destinations. I, I was one of the first, or maybe the first, to be solely specialized in skiing. Um, it was 20 years ago. 20 few years ago, yeah. And, and it was the only thing I knew how to do. And it wasn't because, again, it wasn't a business plan. It was the only thing I knew how to do. So, and as a matter of fact, when people ask me for different destinations, in the beginning I would say no. Not because I, but just because I didn't know how to sell it. Um, but eventually, as the business grew and people started, you know, to request different destinations, in the beginning, to support their ski trips, I had to hire someone who knew about those other destinations more than I did, just to be able to, okay, so if you're going to Aspen, but you want to spend a week in Miami prior, uh, you know, I had to say yes. So I had that person taking care of it. It was only one person. And, and eventually those same clients who you know went to aspen and stayed awake in miami they would come and say well you know you did it so well now i want to spend i don't know a, a week in paris or i want to go to the maldives and i would say no in the beginning but again you know they were four and so that one person suddenly became two three four um and then you know that same person would call me and say now I wanted to take care of my daughter's honeymoon. And so, so that little small department within Ski Brazil that we internally used to call off ski, we had to spin it off, make it its own entity. So Selections was born and that was 12 years ago. So then I had two, two companies, Ski Brazil and Selections, um, both working as outbound for Brazilians, either skiing or other destinations, but always in the high-end travel. What about selections in Mexico? We need so, so lots of luxury travelers here. I know, I know. So so things started to, to grow, right? And then and, and companies are doing well, this is pre-COVID and but Companies were doing super well. So in 2015, we decided to expand, right? And, and we started to see what, how and where we should expand. Um, and as you know, we, we, we had, we had a, a, a choice. It was like a fork on the road. So either we'll talk to a different clientele in, in a lower scale in the pyramid, or we will talk to the same type of clients, but not in Brazil anymore, because Brazil was, I mean, we, we didn't have any space to grow there. So we did, then, then things started to get really professional. Not that we were not professional before, but you know, everything was driven you know, out of passion and there was no real study behind anything. We were doing things and things were working, so we were very happy. But for the first time, we sat and we crafted a business plan. So we, we opened um, Ski USA here in the U.S. In Miami. In Miami. So I moved to Miami. And the reason why Miami, it's be, well, a few reasons. First, because I still needed the connection with Brazil, right? All or most of my operation, it's still nowadays done in Brazil. Even for the sales of Ski USA and other companies that now we have, and I'm going to talk about it. So I, I, I was going to Brazil every other week. 
I, you know, I still have my home in Brazil. Um, I have all my structure in Brazil and, and, and the bulk of the company and the operation is done in Brazil. So every other week I was going to Brazil. So it's a lot easier from Miami than anywhere else in the, in the US. Uh, we had, you know, seven or eight flights a day from Miami to Sao Paulo. So it, it was quite easy. Um, not only that, but we understood that we, here in the US, we need to talk with um, destinations, get people, people who actually get on a plane to go skiing. So it wouldn't make sense to have a, a, a ski tour operator in, in, in Denver or in, because they don't need us. So here in Miami or in Dallas, which are actually this, the two states, Florida and Texas are the two states with the, with the largest number of skiers. Um, so, so Miami was the obvious choice because they, they, they do need us. And it's and, beautiful. Uh, I love Miami. I adore. No, it's it's a beautiful town. It's a beautiful, sexy, very welcoming town, especially for us, right? I mean, it's for someone with with a Latin accent and a Latin blog. We feel at home in Miami, and and I'm very I'm very thankful for every day I lived here and for the community here. But anyway, so Ski USA started to grow uh, from Miami. And, and then we realized that the, the, who actually needed our services and are, are not the end consumer as in Brazil, but are the travel agencies. So we started to go and to work with those travel agents. They had the relationship with the, with the end consumers. So that here in the U.S., it became 100% B2B. So we only deal, we don't deal with direct clients. We only deal with their agents here so we became a virtuoso preferred partner here with yeah here with ski usa travel and made so through through that network we started to go grow our relationship with the travel agents in in again obviously in the u.s but for instance in mexico right now i dare to say that ski usa it's the largest provider of ski vacations for mexicans Marvelous. It's it's amazing, and even like uh, some huge accounts, like American Express, for instance. If you if you call your your I know your your card holder. So if you call your Centurion uh, concierge, and you ask for a ski vacation, we will be taking care of it. Uh, so it's we we I mean Mexico for us, and and it's it's I I I go to Mexico probably 12, 12 times a year. I love Mexico. I can walk Polanco, you know, back and forth. Y, y de verdad, o sea, a mí, a mí me encanta. Yo creo que en otra vida fue mexicano. <laughs> Deberías de llamarme cuando estás aquí. Te lo juro, te lo juro. Y que vengo de volada, pero I, I, I feel Mexican. And, and even, even on vacation, I mean, I take my family, um, you know, we, Dia de Muertos, or it's, it's either San Miguel or Oaxaca, it's... It's for me, Mexico is it's literally home. I, I, I really love it. I love to hear that. No, it's 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 really amazing. And um, so again, we, we started to grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. And then not only that, but we started going a lot to Europe and, and countries, for instance, like Russia. And something happened, something funny happened there. Because when I go to Russia, and just that's just between the two of us, don't tell anyone. I need when I when I go to Russia, you know, and I come with the name Ski USA. It's it's kind of a tricky name to work in Russia. You know, they're not very fond of of Americans, and they can't tell I have an accent because they don't. So so when I when I go there, the first thing I say is I'm here for Ski USA, but I'm not American. I'm not American. I'm Brazilian, and I start telling the story. And then they'll say, well, I'm so glad you're here. I don't have any business for skiing for you, but I have this group going to Brazil. Take a look at this itinerary. And being a local, I started to look at, oh, this doesn't make any sense. It's like, you know, if somebody went to Mexico and you send them, you know, let's say, exactly, you know, you spend two days in Cabo and then you fly to, to Mexico, then you go to Cancun to go to, and then you come back and then you go. It's like, it's crazy, crazy. So I started helping them, especially the Russians, with their, their trips to Brazil. 
and the surrounding countries because when they come, they come for two or three weeks and, and they travel the back. And it's, it's, it's really cool. So I had to start a fourth company, which is very Latin. So then we, we had um, Ski USA, Ski Brazil, selections and very Latin. And then what started happening in the past months, I mean this year, is we struck such a good relationship with the agencies in Mexico, especially the virtuoso agencies, that in they, place, of course. They, they started to, and, and they're amazing. I mean, the, the quality of, of the travel advisor in Mexico, the, 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 the attention to detail and, and the way they take care of their clients, it's, I've never seen anything like that anywhere else in the world. I mean, it's, it's they're really good. They're really, really good. And, and, and which, is, which is music to my ears, because as I said in the beginning, I, I was never selling a package. I was always looking for, and as you said, always looking for the curated, you know, bespoke, tailor-made travel experience. So what, what happened is, they started to, you know, once they, the, the Mexicans started learning that I also had selections um, in Brazil that took care of Brazilians going everywhere. They asked me, as, as a tour operator, as a B2B business, they said, why, you know, why can't you help me with my, my Mexican client here? You are already helping me with the ski, but now he wants to go to China or he wants to go to yeah, India, Iceland. Why, why don't you take care of me? So we started, and this is still very small, I mean, compared to the other companies, because we, in Mexico now, we have three or four agencies that are, I just opened for these three or four agencies, actually four agencies that are testing the services of what we're calling Selections Viajes. That it's, it's purely B2B, um, and, and because we, we, we learned so well this B2B market, that we, we don't need to and we don't want to deal with direct client. That's, that's a relationship that the agent have. I, I want to take care of that agent. So the fifth company, it's going to be, and it started already, Selections Viajes. We're still, you know, testing what works and what doesn't for the Mexican market. But, but once we have it set, then we, we're going to launch it. Obviously, it's crazy times. and. Uh, that we're leaving now so everything is at a much slower pace but but it is a very good market mexicans love to travel nice they love good food they go with all the family so it's a good business and you know you that you've always been focusing on relationship you do it much more than just right you, you 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 hit the nail in the head so that's that's the big difference and again just between the two of us and maybe i'll even say it in spanish La verdad, la verdad es que nadie me escuche de nuevo, es que los gringos no son de relación, son transaccionales, y eso a mí no me cuadra. A veces sí, a veces sí, depende, sometimes... No, no, es cierto, pero... So the thing is, again, I mean, I'm all about relationships. Exactly. And, and I, I love, you know, people and, and, and that exchange that we have. And at the end of the day, I think that's what a travel experience is. An experience is it's building the relationships. It's it's when you when when you you look at a map and and it's not a map anymore. You don't see like the name of the places and and the text of places you've been or you want to be there in your bucket list. You start seeing stories. You start seeing people. You start seeing faces, names, and you start remembering. And and this is this is the beauty of life. This is. Like us, you know, how, how we, we, we met and we connected and, and, and now we're friends and we're going to be friends for life. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Because and, you listen, that's what you said. It's so important. How many people want to sell you something that you're not interested in? But when you listen, then you give the, the dreams of the other person, you make them real. And that's, we all dream about traveling and places and, and we need somebody to listen to us and tailor-made the travel the way we want it to be. And you know me that I travel seven, eight months a year. It's so important to talk to somebody that listens to you and know exactly what, what you're looking for when you're looking on, on traveling and going somewhere. 
You're absolutely correct. I mean, I, I never sell anything to anyone, nor my team, because now, you know, we, we're several, and this is something we, we never, we, we, what we do is we fulfill dreams, right? We, we deliver. So that's, it, it's, it, that's the art. It's to listen to very subjective inputs and turn it, you know, and, and turn it into something very objective, which is at the end of the day, the trial experience. And, and the approach to each trip, it's absolutely different, totally different. So even if you're going with your family, you know, to the same place in the same dates that a different family is going, the, the approach and the experience and, and the, the focus of the trip may be totally different. And, and you will have totally different experiences and you both will enjoy it. So, yeah. And you are, you are directed to discerning travelers, people that know about travel, they know what they want. So you have to thrive to give this almost perfection in what you offer them. It's not almost. It needs to be. It's. It, it needs to be per perfect. We, there, there's no almost. We we need to really be very attentive to all the details, you know, and 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 and, and read between the lines and understand what the client really is saying when they say something and and what what he actually means and why is he saying that. And because many times, and, and, and on the process of designing that trip, many times we feel that we're not a fit to that client. Because that client, you know, he comes with a preconceived idea. Uh, and it's something that he heard from a friend. And uh, that, you know, and, and maybe, yeah, that worked for his friend. But we, when we know that that experience that he's asking, it's not going to work for him, we will say no. So you're obsessive with, with perfection, Eduardo Gas. Te digo, no, it's not that I'm obsessive with perfection. It's, there's no, there's no in between. There's no like shades of gray. <laughs> it's either black or white. It's either, it's either perfect or it's not. So it's not that I'm obsessive with perfection. I mean, there's a way things needs to be, need to be done. And, and either it's done that way or I'd rather not do it. Yes, zero mistakes when you travel, you need that. You need everything to just work like a clock and that everything will be like what you're expecting. But you know what, Debbie? I mean, things do happen. Things do happen. And because, again, it's such a long tail. And sometimes it's, you know, the, 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 the driver of the car had a fight with the wife the previous night. night and he's in a, such a bad mood. And, and that will impact the client's experience. So... There are, there are circumstances that are out of our control. So that's when we, are, we, we really show what we came for. We really show what we're about. It's when we get those, let's say, unexpected or a little more difficult situations and, and we turn it into, we, we, we make it into something good. You know, we have, we have the opportunity to show the client why, why he, he called us in the first place. So there, I had this professor, I said, you know, if you don't do it right the first time, do it right the second time. Mm -hmm. So that's actually when something happens is when we have the opportunity to really show what we're about. And you know what the beauty of it is? We, we don't, and I, don't, don't, take, don't take me wrong, we don't cost anything. We work for free. No one pays. No one pays to, I mean, we will be very selective who we work with, um, and this is not about price point. It, it has to do with alignment on necessities. If, if it's someone who's transactional, we want, even if somebody calls me and says, look, um, you know, I need a presidential suite of the Four Seasons, I don't know where, in, in New York, and I'm looking at booking.com, I'll say stop. Go ahead and, and click you know, the, the reserve button. Because if you're looking at, at booking.com, that's where you should be buying. And I know that I can even beat booking.com on price on a four season. But the client who comes with that approach, he's, he's not a client. He's a transaction. So I don't want a transaction. I want a relationship. 
And, so, I think, and it's beautiful, Eduardo, I was reading that in, in TTW Group, in your company, you believe that travel, it's about exploring with purpose. I loved it. Spending your precious time with your loved ones. I saw you with your kids skiing. Showing the world to our children, learning about different culture, you say. Uh, everything this is, is, that's why you design it and you do it in, in that kind of, of um, personal touch. And that's what's so beautiful about your company. We, we, don't, we don't even know how to do it any other way. So, you know, and, and sometimes it's hard, especially here in the U.S. on the B2B, because the, the Mexicans, and I think that's why I got so along with Mexicans, I think they're very similar to Brazil. Of course. But here in the U.S., sometimes I just receive a request, you know, from an agency saying, this is what my client wants. And, and then we, you know, our first step is to get back and say, but why? You know, we, why? why? Why does he want that? And, and it, That's like thinking in the box a little bit of instead course. of discovering new places, new cultures, new food, new experiences. Absolutely. I, I agree with you. And so, what's important about travel to be very open mind, of course, have perfection in all the services, but at the same time, to go and discover new things. Absolutely, absolutely. So what was, what was, no, no, I can't, what was the last trip you made that, that really opened your mind? What, what was your like? Oh, we made so many trips. Well, yesterday we came back from Cozumel, from the beach, because now we're traveling, of course, in Mexico, and we went to Riviera Maya, and uh, we stayed in the beautiful banyan tree, I'm oh, sure you heard of Yacoba. And then uh, we stayed in Izuk in Cancun, which is also marvelous hotel. Marvelous. Then we went to a little hotel boutique, Be, Be Unique, in Cozumel. And uh, before that, you know, we've, we've gone to Bhutan and to Namibia and uh, Iceland. But one of the last one was very interesting. It was Georgia, Armenia, Azerbaijan. And it was, it was different. And uh, we just love that part of the world. Very good and very special wines that they've been doing in Georgia for the last 8,000 years. So for me that I'm so much in the wine business, as you know, it was really interesting. And uh, well, yeah, always traveling next will be, as you know, in um, Italy and Switzerland and uh, Malta, and we'll go a little bit to the south, to Sicily, and all that part that I just love. Tell me about your plans as the future with your company. Um, what, what else you're going to do? Now you're getting bigger in Mexico, and selection is getting even stronger. What are your plans? I know you're always like, like a little machine. <laughs> no, I, I, I want to, I, I have this, my, my passion now is very Latin. I think that Brazil, it's a beautiful, beautiful country. The numbers that we see in Brazil of visitors are, are really like irrelevant. I'll tell you, six million people visit Brazil every year and that is counting business trips and even the, the, the cruise ships that people only you know go uh, hop in and off, off. So it's the numbers, and I'll give an example, like in Barcelona, there's 60 million, and I'm talking about one city, I'm not talking even about the whole Spain, right? Uh, 18 million people go on the Eiffel Tower every year, three times more than the visit of the whole country of Brazil. So the numbers in Brazil are really relevant, and Brazil is a beautiful, beautiful country. So we have from the jungles and the rivers in the Amazon, to the whole um, ecosystems in the Chapadas in, in, the, in the Middle East of Brazil, which are phenomenal. Obviously, we have all the beaches from Fernando de Noronha to, to, to all the beaches in Búzios and all, all the, the, the road from Rio to Sao Paulo through the beach. You know, you have places like Parachi who are stuck in time since the, 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 the time of the slaves. You know, the city is untouched. Wow. Since 1750, to you know all the the, the wineries in, in in the south of Brazil. So it's it's such a rich country. You know, I've been only to Rio de Janeiro twice. Oh no, that's also I haven't been to Brazil. Really. So listen, you're gonna be the first person to come 
uh, once it opens again, because unfortunately the country's closed now, but it should, again, like me, we've been traveling since Marco Polo, since the Vikings, right? And even before, I mean, seeing, enduring much harder uh, conditions and situations that we have now, when we go on an uh, Aeromexico or Volaris or American Airlines flight, and we see them, so rest assured, we'll be traveling again soon. And when it happens, I'll be waiting for you in Brazil. And I'll no seriously, you you need to come, and you're gonna you're gonna learn to love my country the same way that I love your country. Because I it's, love it's your country already because I love you. So that's enough. Thank you. As a way to understand the country, Thank but you. you really have to live it. Of course, of course. Thank you. Thank a you. great pleasure. More selections to come, more country, more places. So when so very Latin will be will be focused on uh, Brazil uh, mainly and its neighboring countries because when people come, especially from afar, and and the funny thing about Russia is the reason why they come to Brazil it's because it's one of the very few countries where they can come in without a visa. Oh, that's so important. So so when they come. They, they come not only to Brazil, but they also visit Argentina and Chile and Uruguay. And, you know, they go to Peru. It's Peru is beautiful. I mean, if you go to Machu Picchu, Cusco, uh, Valle Sagrado, it's, it's out of this world. So this whole, I mean, our Latin America, and I'm including Mexico, you know, every, everything south of Rio Grande, it's so amazing, and, and we so underappreciated. We should be like... Traveling the, a lot in our continent. And you're doing a lot in Patagonia, no, Eduardo, now? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's part of the, of the experience in South America. Patagonia is beautiful. Um, it, it, has, uh, it has surged as, as this destination. Um, it, it's it always been for Latin Americans like Brazilians, Argentinians, Chileans, we always used to go to Patagonia, Tierra del Fuego, um, you know, places like Ushuaia, Calafachi, and uh, even Bariloche, that, that we, we, we used to go there for a long, long time. But now they're getting more international exposure because people are looking more for those more um, less less traveled places. Less traveled places, exactly. Thank you. <laughs> so that's marvelous. Eduardo Gas, it was a real, real pleasure. You're the only one, maybe, or one of the only that gives us these authentic travel experiences. And, and you know, you know really a lot about traveling. You do it just the right way. And since the moment I met you, I know I knew it it will be a long friendship and I admire you and I wish you the best. It's reciprocal. Thank you. And it's so marvelous what you've been doing. And with this acoustic, I would like to say salud. Salud. How do you say in Portuguese? Saúde. 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 Cheers for the pleasure. And I really hope to see you very soon in Mexico, in Brazil, in Miami, anywhere, as long as it's traveling and discovering the world. Aren't we always traveling? Right, traveling is a state of mind. It's not about hopping on a plane. Is this you can travel from? And, and now we've been doing it. We've been traveling from our homes. Exactly. So it's exactly. it's a state of mind, and we cannot afford to get out of this state of mind because travel it's what takes your mind, not only your body and your soul, but your mind to different places, different experiences. And uh, so let's keep on traveling. Absolutely. Thank you. What a pleasure. Oh, thank you, Debbie. Really. Thank you. Thank you.